Before we get started, I wanted to clear up something that came up in a previous Lightroom mobile video I did. It got hundreds and hundreds of comments on people not being able to do this super cool technique on Androids or non iPhones. So after finally researching it, because I do have an iPhone, researching it and finding out and talking to my exploring photography crew, which way to come out and help me out guys. That is awesome. I super appreciate it. Uh, I figured out how to do it and it's actually really simple. So let me show you. Let's go ahead and open Lightroom. Let's open the first photo here and we're going to open light. Now the technique was to set your whites and your blacks to perfect exposure. Like, so you have just enough whites and just enough blacks. How I said to do this was to using two fingers, you touch the slider, you touch the photo, and then you slide it back and forth. Now, a lot of people were having trouble that when they touched the photo, it just showed the before and after. However, that is true. There is a easier way to do it and it does require two fingers. So what you're going to do is let's go ahead and drop the highlights on this photo a little. We're going to raise the shadows a little bit and then we're going to go down to the whites and blacks. What you're going to do is you're going to touch the white slider and then adjust it and then touch the black part, not the photo, the black part and then move the slider. This is with two fingers touching the screen. So don't remove them and then adjust the slider. As you move the slider, you'll notice you see that red that is pure white. So that is where we want to go. And then you're going to touch the black slider, move it, and then touch the black part of the screen and then slide it until you get the blacks. So there you go. That is the easiest way to do it. Now I have had this tested with the free version and with the Android, the Galaxy Ultra 20 Note or whatever, and the Huawei, however you pronounce that, the Huawei P20. All of this works with the free version and the paid version of Lightroom to set your whites and blacks. So thanks my exploring photography crew for coming out and helping me perfect this and figure out the issues and smooth it all out. You guys are awesome. But let's get started with the video. Will Simpson here and welcome back to exploring photography. It's always good to see you guys here enjoying each one of my videos. Today we are going over the new Lightroom mobile masking update where selective edits like the adjustment brush, the gradient filter and the radial filter have become masking in Lightroom. Unfortunately, these features are only for the paid version of Lightroom. However, it is only $4.99 a month for the Lightroom mobile. If you have the Adobe, uh, an Adobe membership like Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic, it is free with it. So if you have a Adobe membership, just download Lightroom and then log in using that account and you get all the features of Lightroom mobile. But let's get in and let's go over these amazing new updates. It, it, I always had issues with the selective updates. They were always kind of user unfriendly. And with this new update, they have become much more user friendly and I'm loving them. So let's get into Lightroom. Let me start the record on my phone. One of my worst fears is uh, <laughs> where it stops recording in the middle. All right, now we got the screen recording. So let's go out of this photo. Let's go to our next photo that we're going to be messing with. And we're just going to do the masking. This is just going over the masking. So if you look on the left side, you'll see masking. Let's go ahead and click that. And you'll get a plus sign on the right side. Click plus. You'll notice several different options. You'll notice select subject, select sky, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color range and luminance range, including depth range, but that's never popped up. So I'm not sure if that's even active yet. So you have a lot more options now than just the brush, the gradient filter and the radial filter. You now can do select thing sky and subject. Also, you can use luminance and color range mask, which are awesome. When you open up the mask for the first time, it has a blue dot on the select subject and the select sky. When you click one of them, it goes into this preparing for first time use. Now, I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, but it does take a few minutes to kind of acclimate. And then once it's done, it doesn't do this part again. So I'm going to fast forward this video really fast because I don't know how long this is going to take and I don't want you to sit there and twiddle your thumbs like I'm about to do. Okay, we're done. So then once it's done, press create and it's going to detect the subject and there is no subject in this. So it's not probably going to find anything, which it didn't. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to on the left side, click the trash and we're going to throw that away. I just wanted to show you what it does on the first time use. So I'm going to select the sky and it's just, it doesn't do that part now because I did it earlier and it's going to detect the sky and it's going to do a pretty decent job. Now, because the sky and the foreground there, the horizon there are kind of similar colors because when I did the edit, I blended them together. It did pick up quite a bit of it. So with this new feature, it is really cool. We're going to click the plus and minus sign and press subtract from mask one, which is the mask one we just created. And we're going to now have all of our options to choose from. 
we're gonna click the brush. Now before, to adjust the brush and the size and all that, it was kind of complicated. I never fully got it, but now it's really easy. So if you see on the left side, 48, and this is the size of the brush. Super simple to adjust the size. The next one is the feather. So you can adjust the feather of the brush. So let's make it soft. And then the next one is the opacity, how strong it is. So you have all of your controllable features in this brush, which is awesome. Oh, so good to finally have. So let's go ahead and make this feather a little smaller. We're gonna make this brush a little bit smaller there. And then we're going to paint here and we're going to subtract that part of the horizon. And boom, we have officially selected the sky. So now let's go into light. We're going to darken it. There we go, beautiful. Once we're done, press the check mark at the bottom. So that is how to simply use the masking tools. Now let's go back into the masking tool and let's push and hold on the first mask we created, mask one. It gives you all of these options. Let's go ahead and rename and rename it sky, which makes for organization so much better. Go ahead and click it again and it has all these other options. You can duplicate it, you can delete it, you can hide it so you can see what it looks like without it and you can also add or subtract. We first subtracted but you can also add to masks. So let's do another one. Click the plus sign and let's click linear gradient and let's pull from the bottom and then let's go ahead and just simply darken this. This is just the simple graduated filter, which is very good for pulling attention into the image. Once that's done, go ahead and click light again to close it and then you can create new masks or whatnot. And that's a quick way to add a linear, linear gradient, but let's say we wanna brighten just the greens of the image. Before we carry on, if you guys wanna get some really awesome, moody deliciousness presets, I created three for Lightroom and Lightroom Mobile. All you have to do is click the link in the description and they are amazing. You just click and edit and look at that. They edit so freaking smoothly. Once they're done, just press check and there you go before and after. So if you wanna get that moody deliciousness, click the link in the description, fill out the form, and they'll be emailed right to you. But let's say we wanna brighten just the greens of the image. So let's delete that linear gradient. Let's press plus, and let's go ahead and click color range. Now it gives you this little target symbol. As you move this target symbol around, it picks up those colors. Notice that if I select the mountains, it kind of selects the entire image because it's very similar colors. But if I come down to the green, it does a really good job of picking up just the green. Now I can even refine this. So if I wanted to collect a more broad sample of color, I can slide it up and it'll collect more and more colors. If I wanted to select a very small amount of colors, I can slide it down and you notice that the, the selection is refined. This is so cool. So let's go ahead and slide this up just until we see that it's picking up the information on the right side out of the, the foreground element and that works good. So then apply and then we are going to go into color. We're going to raise the saturation, bring out those greens, go into light and raise the exposure. There we go, yes, beautiful. And there we go. Click light again to close it and we have now adjusted just the green foreground. This is so freaking cool. The last one we're gonna go is the luminance range, which allows you to do a really nice dodge and burn technique. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. Click the plus sign, go to luminance range. Now, if you're not familiar with the luminance range, it simply means light. So this bar here shows blacks on the left, shadows, midtones, highlights, and then whites. So you can adjust what part of the light you're adjusting in the image. So let's say you wanna brighten up all the lights simply to click on the left side of the screen and slide this all the way over to the highlights and the whites, so right about there. Now this little arrow here, this one, is the feather, so how quickly this effect cuts off. If I slide it all the way over, it's affecting still the entire image at a gradient, and if I slide this all the way over to the midtones, which is kind of where we want it, it'll affect up to the midtones, which is what we want. Now you can also adjust this by hitting the circle, and sliding it so you can adjust it more, you can refine it even more. And finally, you'll notice this little circle at the top. That is your sampling tool. So if I move this around, it will adjust where I want to um, adjust the light. So it's, it's kind of, you have multiple options to pick exactly what you want. You can also click this box here in the bottom and you can draw the area that you want. That one's a, not as good, I don't think, but I haven't used it that much. Generally, I just do it myself. 
So let's click the circle again. Let's refine our adjustment and then let's press apply, go into the light, add a little bit of exposure. We're gonna do the same thing, click light again, create a new one, and we're going to just do the darks. So again, to the blacks and the shadows, slide this in so you notice it's really affecting just the darks. And then we're going to apply, click the light, and, ray, and lower the exposure to give us some contrast. Press check, and there we go, we've used a lot of the mask. Now one thing I do wanna do is add a quick radial gradient right here, because I wanna get that sun flare. So let's go ahead and raise the exposure there. And then we're gonna go into color, raise the warmth, there we go, that's looking good. Next, click color to close that. With the mask selected, press the plus or minus, subtract. We're gonna take it out of that uh, horizon area. So let's go ahead and click the brush and let's paint right here and get rid of it on the mountains there. And we are looking good. Okay, good, press check. So here's the before and here is the after. Before, after, much better. And that was simply using these masking tools which are so freaking good. So I hope this kind of gave you an overview of how these new tools really work in Lightroom Mobile. It is so much more user friendly. Well done Adobe on uh, making this update because it makes these tools, which were quite difficult before, so much more fluid and so much more simple to use. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want some more Lightroom tips and tricks, there is a great video that I recommend right here. Go watch that, but make sure you hit the subscribe button first and like the video because it does really help. Anyways, it was great to see you guys and I'll see you guys over at that video. See ya.